Hi, I'm Angie Brown with buildingbetterleaders.org. I am your leadership coach and learning facilitator. Do you or your team have conflict? And would you like to know how to turn that conflict around, turn it into something that is productive, energy that solves problems and moves you and your team to better work relationships? Well, in this video, I will teach you why your mindset is the first step in managing conflict. For more leadership videos with helpful tips and techniques, be sure and subscribe to my channel and then be sure and click the bell so you get notified each week when a new video arrives. Marshall Rosenberg, the author of Nonviolent Communication says, to practice the process of conflict resolution, we must completely abandon the goal of getting people to do what we want. By the end of this video, you will be able to consciously choose your mindset. And if you choose wisely, you will have more productive outcomes when you find yourself in conflict. Now you might be wondering why mindset has anything to do with conflict. I've been facilitating training classes where the leader has said to me, Angie, can you just give me a script? I've seen those scripts. I've seen those programs where we teach people how to focus on the message by giving them a script. What I'm going to share with you over the next several videos is that it's not a script. It is not important at all to have a script. What works best is that we focus on the heart, that we focus on our thinking first. Covey says that we should always think about our paradigm first because how we think shows up in our behaviors. That's why it is so important to start with our mindset. So let's dive in to the mindset of conflict. For a moment, imagine a house. Imagine that conflict is a house and that you've walked up to the front door of this conflict house. There are two doors. One is labeled right, wrong, and the other door is labeled curious. Now, before you choose one of those two doors, let me share a little bit more information about the two doors. The first door labeled right, wrong is literally the door that most of us choose. It's most often where we start in conflict. We have an opinion and most of the time our goal is to prove that we're right. We might listen partially to the other person, but somewhere along the line, we have determined that it's our way or the highway, that we are right, they are wrong, and our goal, literally our end in mind, is to be right. Most of the time, when we're trying to figure out who is to blame, we have entered the right-wrong door. Now, the other door is labeled curiosity. It's the door that suspends judgment. It's also the door that has the most vulnerability. It's the door where we have the most opportunity to find a solution. There's a saying that says, curiosity killed the cat. Now, this is not the type of curiosity I am referring to. That type of curiosity is really when we are just being nosy. This curiosity takes a vulnerable mind, heart, and we must seek first to understand the other person in the conflict. Really, it's habit five of Covey. Seek first to understand and then be understood. So let's be clear, challenging your own mindset is not a surefire, foolproof way to handle conflict. We are actually not sure what the other person's mindset is. We don't know which door they've entered. However, if we choose the curious door as opposed to the right wrong door, we know that we have an opportunity to find solutions and to bring the other person along as much as we can in being curious and looking for solutions. What I have found in my coaching practice is that if you choose the door that's labeled curious, 
you will feel more in control of your own actions and you will feel more peace and you'll be able to move in the conflict house with integrity. So now that you know the first and the most important step in conflict resolution, the challenge is for you to assess your mindset. This week, when conflict arises, and I can almost guarantee you that it will in some way, stop. Ask yourself a very important coaching question. What is my end in mind? What is my goal? Now, I've asked that question to some of my leader coachees. Sometimes they're honest and they'll just say, I want this person to do what I want them to do. Or sometimes they'll say, I want to be right. That's really what I want. Well, good. At least you've acknowledged that. And now we can make a better choice, right? If you want to have more productive conflict conversations, it is about suspending that judgment and entering the curious door. So once you've acknowledged the door you want to go in, let's keep going. There are a couple of questions that you can ask the other person when you're in conflict. One question is to ask, tell me more. You see, that question is curious because the other party in the conflict often has more information that you need. And it's a great curiosity question. It lets you know that you're suspending your judgment of being right or wrong and that you want to know what they know. So it invites the other person to be part of the conversation. The second question is, Is it true? Now you might be wondering why I even asked that question. Is it true? You might think that sounds a little judgmental. Actually, it doesn't. The truth is, is we all carry around stories in our head and we all carry around predetermined answers that sometimes simply are not true. Now I'll give you a couple of examples and ways that this can be used. In a recent coaching session, the leader said to me, I'd like to give feedback to someone, one of my employees, and I'm afraid that when I do that, they're going to see me as a bad person. So I stopped them and I said, is it true? And they said, is what true? And I said, is it true that you're a bad person if you give them feedback? The answer is no. So it's just an example of how you can ask the question, is it true, in a curious way. Now, both of the questions, again, are designed to suspend judgment on your part and to invite them into a conversation. One of my favorite quotes is from Theodore Roosevelt, and it says, nobody cares how much you know until they know that you care about them first. We want to invite our people into a conversation. I would love for you to comment below and let me know your thoughts. How is this working with this mindset first attitude? What do you think about those coaching questions? Can you suspend judgment? Let me know, comment below. And if you like this video, please let me know by liking it and also be sure and share it with your fellow leaders. For leadership coaching for you or your team, be sure and contact me at buildingbetterleaders.org. Also be sure and download my free ebook on conflict. Thank you for watching.